Welcome to 10 Minute KQL. Whether you're a technology pro looking to master the Kusto query language or new to the world of IT and looking to learn your first language, 10 Minute KQL is a place to level up your skills. This is the seventh session in the Kusto query language beginner series. This series is intended to take you from a level with minimal technical experience to writing your first basic queries using the KQL language. These short 10 minute sessions will teach you KQL, allow you to get hands-on practice in a lab environment, and provide some homework to practice after the session. In the last session, we went over distinct, count, and sort. In today's session, we'll introduce the project operator, start working with numbers, and show how to access a free log analytics workspace demo environment to practice your queries. If you find value in these videos, please hit the like button. And if you want to receive notifications of new videos, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. In session two of the beginner series, we walked through setting up ADX so we had a free environment to practice our queries in. Today, we'll show you how to access a free log analytics workspace demo environment. Periodically, we'll show different Microsoft user interfaces that interact with KQL so you can get used to working with different data sets, different user interfaces, and get exposure to solving different problem sets using your KQL skills. First, navigate to aka.ms slash LADemo. Authenticate with your Microsoft account or create a new one with your personal email address if you don't already have an account. Once you authenticate, you can see some differences from our ADX work environment. On the left, we have three basic options, tables, queries, and functions. Also, if we need more real estate for queries or results, we can use these arrows to contract and expand the left panel. On the tables section, we can see a list of categories which tables are located in. This is different than the ADX, where the top of our hierarchy was a cluster name. As we expand any category or solution, we see the tables inside. When we write our queries in the Log Analytics workspace, we have access to all the listed tables in each solution category. There's no need to reference the cluster and database like we did in ADX. If we expand Azure Monitor for VMs, we see six table options. If we expand any of these tables, we can see the fields inside the table. To the right of each field, the data type is displayed, such as string, integer, long, real, dynamic, or date time. To the left is a symbol that represents each data type for a quick visual cue. We'll discuss data types more in the intermediate series, but at this point, if you write a query and receive an error associated with a data type, it may be that the task you're trying to perform is limited to certain data types. We have the power to change the data type so the query will do what we're trying to accomplish, but again, we'll cover these concepts in greater detail in the intermediate series. Let's start out by taking a sample of the VM computer table to see what kind of data it contains. As we scroll through all the fields, we see that this table provides information on virtual machines in our environment. It can be a little hard to make sense of all the information because there's so many fields. That's where the project operator can help. Project only displays the fields of interest to us. In this example, we're only interested in seeing five fields, time generated, host name, operating system family, CPUs, and CPU speed. If we just want to see these five fields in our results and nothing else, then we can type project in all lowercase letters, followed by the names of the fields we want to see displayed. Remember to use the proper spacing and capitalization and to place a comment between the fields. As we run the query, we can see that all the other fields that were not of interest to us are taken out of the results. Generally, project is used towards the end of the query as we finalize the information we're interested in seeing it and worry more about how it's presented. If we want to use where statements to filter, we would generally place those before the project statement. In this example, we only want to see VMs with Windows operating system. In the output data set, we have two columns that display numbers, so let's talk about how to filter numbers. We can use comparison operators. If we wanted to only see VMs with a CPU value of 4, we can type in the double equals comparison operator to get that exact result. What if we wanted to see VMs with a CPU value of 2 or more? We can use the greater than or equals to and the value of 2. We're saying we want to filter and see records where the CPU value either equals or is greater than the number of 2. As we run this query, we can see both two and four values displayed. 
If we only wanted to see values greater than two, but not equal to two, we could use the greater than comparison operator alone. The same concept applies with the less than comparison operator. And in this case, I only want to see VMs with a CPU value of less than, but not equal to the number four. Let's do a different exercise on the new table. Let's expand Microsoft Sentinel, which is a security tool to consolidate and automate security information and alerting. Let's take a sample of the security event table. As we look at the fields and the data sample, we can see again that there's a lot of information present. We could use the project operators to select just the fields of interest and remove the rest of the fields so we can begin to filter our query. Another option is to just move and consolidate the fields of interest, but still leave the other fields in case we needed to reference some of the information on occasion. The project reorder operator is helpful in this situation. In this example, we have three fields of interest, the activity field, the process field, and the account type field. When we type in project reorder in all lowercase, followed by the three fields of interest, and we run the query, we see that our three fields are moved all the way on the left side of the results, but the rest of the results are still present in case we need to reference other lines on occasion. Later, if we find an additional field of interest, we can simply add it to the project reorder line. Also, when we use the project operators, we can change the order of the displayed column simply by changing the order in our query. If we want process to display before activity, we can switch the order in the query. We can also easily rename fields by using the equal sign. In the next example, let's use project for our three fields of interest, but let's change a field name so it makes more sense. Let's change the activity field to be called process code. Let's do one more exercise with a new table. Let's work with a VM connection table. As we take a sample and examine the data set, we see the network connection information for VMs in our environment. In this query, we want to see the remote IPs along with the remote country for all destination ports of 443. Sometimes when we answer a question using KQL, it can lead to additional questions. In this case, we see a variety of countries, but now we want to know all the unique countries in a list. We can go back to our previous lesson and use distinct as we comment out the project line and run the query. This new unique country list may also bring up new sets of questions. You may want to explore all the connections from Sweden next as you pursue the iterative investigation and discovery process. For this week's homework assignment, let's use the new Log Analytics Workspace demo environment and focus on the usage table. Write a query that shows the records with a quantity field greater than or equal to 10. In the results, display only the quantity, quantity unit, and data type fields. To make things easier to read, change the title of quantity unit to units. Post your query in the comments section of the video and take a look at how others wrote their queries. In the next video in the beginner series, we'll cover the Boolean operators of AND and OR. We'll also cover limit, top, and decount. If you find value in these videos, please support the channel by hitting the like button. And if you want to receive notifications of new videos, hit the subscribe button with the notification bell.